Welcome back. It's an honor to have Jazz Bali here today. He's been a friend. I've been following him on social media, following his journey, really inspired in his endeavor to bring what well, I'll let you, I'll let him share, but it's not an area that I knew too much about until uh, having met him and having conversations with him. So let's get right into it. Jazz, can you um, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much uh, for having me uh, on, on your uh, on your program and, and uh, it means a lot to me because I'm a keen listener and I'm a keen follower of uh, the work that you're doing. Um, so it means a lot to me that, that you know, that you've actually done, they made this initiative and made this happen um, because I think that uh, a lot of people will be able to, to you know, benefit from, from this chat. Perfect. So what, what do you do? So Viji, actually, I'm a full-time musician and um, uh, I, um, my, my trade is basically teaching and, and uh, performing. Uh, and amongst that, I do uh, a little bit of academic work as well a little bit of, uh, you know, writing uh, on, on the topic and, and um, a lot of, you know, sort of research in terms of our, uh, our music, musical heritage. Um, so I've spent quite a bit of time now, uh, you know, dedicating my, my whole life to, to music in and throughout. Okay. And I know we have a mutual friend, Gurvid, and I know he went to Pakistan with you. So can you tell us a little bit about that trip, what it was about? Yeah, 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 Pakistan. Um, so um, myself and Kirit Singh, um, you know, we were really, really good friends and co sort of musicians together. We have um, a band together called Drupad Dhamar and, and we go and, and, and share our music and, and give Kirtan Hazaris all over the world. Um, so uh, as a part of the, the work, the research that, we're, that we've been doing, uh, we were very fortunate to get out to countries like India and Pakistan and, and, and go and find, you know, the lost heritage. Um, and, and it basically was, for, for me especially, it was, uh, it was like seeing the other side of the coin. You know, I had no exposure to, uh, to, to Kirtan. I had no exposure to, uh, you know, uh, the, the people that would do Kirtan in Pakistan. You know, I couldn't even begin to imagine what it was. Uh, what it was. So for me, it was a huge eye opener. Um, and, and, and so uh, we have an initiative called the Mardana Project. Uh, and as a part of this project, we aim to um, demystify uh, a lot of the common day narratives as to, uh, you know, what is the correct way to do Kirtan and, 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 and you know, sort of answering these sort of questions. So that, that brings me to a question which somebody asked, um, which was, in your opinion, uh, what's your opinion on Kirtan that's not in Raag? So is it okay to do that or? Yeah, I, th I think this is, this is something which, um, you know, it's, it's a very common thread at the moment, you know, uh, that should the, the Bani be sung uh, as the, the rag, rag that it's prescribed in. And um, I'm not in a position to say, uh, you know, what is right and what is wrong, but I can share, if it's okay with you, I can share what it means to me. Yes. Uh, and for me, um, I've always believed in the, the Bani having, you know, a, a greater meaning, you know, and, and for me, that greater meaning was, you know, okay, yes, the Bani is there, the Ajarin should be should, you know, with all the respect possible, um, you know, yes, musical measures are, are, are added to the Bani, you know, uh, but it's got to be more to that than, you know, just being, a, a, you know, just being music, you know, um, so for me, it's, it's the way I see it is that once that bunny has been actioned, you've applied it into your life. For me, that's where it actually makes sense. Otherwise, you're just, you're just singing a song. You know, you're continually, you know, saying the same thing and it's not, you know, you know you're not doing anything about it. Yeah, so for me, rag gitan isn't, isn't just, you know, okay, you've, you've done it in the rag, you know, you've, you've, you've uh, selected the right tal. Uh, you know, you, you've got the right instruments as well. Uh, okay, and that's it. It's done. There's more to it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's got to, you got to apply that money to your life. Yeah. Awesome. And um, what got you into this line in terms of Kirtan and Tabla? So Kirtan and Tabla was something which was uh, very much part of uh, my family's daily life. You know, um, uh, we, well, my family, we're from America. Um, you know, um, I was really, really young when, when my mom and dad moved to America. 
Um, and the Sangha there at that time wasn't, there wasn't a lot of uh, Sikh community. So what we would do is every evening we'd get together as a family and do kirtan. You know, we'd do that together, we'd do kirtan and have dinner. You know, and that was, that's how we would finish every day. You know, so for us, uh, you know, kirtan, it, it was a part of, it was a part of our fabric, you know, a part of our living. That's amazing. And how, like, how old were you when you started playing tabla? Like, what's your journey? In, I know so, you play tabla, so excuse my ignorance, but you know what was that musical professional musical musician journey like? So yeah, actually, uh, yeah, I started off playing the tabla, and um, uh, it was it, it's, it actually started from my older brother uh, Manmoor. He he was a really fine tabla player, um, and and uh, because you know at that time in in America he was probably one of the very few people that that knew how to play the tabla. Um, and, and so he wouldn't let me touch his instrument ever. And, and, and I think that curiosity, that initial curiosity, that's what actually got me into it, where, you know, he would, uh, he, he would hide his, his Buddha in his room, you know, and, and I was never allowed access to it. And whenever I was allowed to play, because my sister, she's, you know, a really good Kirtani. Um, so whenever I was allowed to play, it would always be on, 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 on one of the, uh, you know, the not so good tablas, you know. So I think that, that, you know, started off my of my journey within the you know within the musical field. And um, how did it take you before you kind of were able to think, all right, this is something I want to do professionally? Or was it an overnight thing, or did you just think a long time ago that it was? It was, it was actually um, it was quite a struggle, uh, if I'm honest with you. From my from my teenage, uh, I'd spend um, you know more time doing riyas of tabla than my own studies you know and uh to that result my my mom and dad they they were not happy you know they weren't happy at all um and and so uh, i'd have two tears of punishment my, my they would install my brother and say that if he fails his exams somebody gonna get a hurt you know and and then so i had two tears of pressure you know um and and uh two tears of beats as well <laughs> that's a good system it was it was it was uh, it was good for them uh, but i just i just couldn't get my uh, my my head into uh, into studying uh, but i don't know with the gurus get by i managed to go through college managed to get through university i i studied law at university um and so when i graduated from university um you know it was like okay you know this is an opportunity now for me to to pursue my dream you know um and, and it, it was very difficult because you have a lot of pressure, you know, you have a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, my dad, he would say to me, uh, you know, you're, you're a silly guy, you know, you're not going to be able to create sustainability. How are you going to pay your bills? You know, you, double R players don't make money, man, you know, um, and, 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 you know, it, he was, he's, he's, he's right up to an extent. He's right up to an extent. It just goes to show in terms of if you're really passionate about something, you have this love for something you know you've obviously made a lot of sacrifices you you followed your dream a lot of people kind of they die with that dream in them right they think oh, i wish i could be an artist or i wish i could be you know follow this music and, and you're probably one of the few who's actually done it yeah 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 i come from actually my, my family are they're all quite heavily educated um you know so um that in itself was a, a huge huge uh you know going away from the mold there you know uh, where the expectation was that, you know, you're going to become a solicitor, you're going to go into a nine to five, you know, uh, you're going to get married, you're going to have some kids and, and, and that's your life set there, you know. So going back to the tabla, when did you transition from tabla to kind of classical musical instruments? And what's your opinion on, on the like transition from classical music instruments to things like the harmonium? So, um, I started off playing tabla, yes. Uh, I, I played tabla uh, until around the age of 15. Uh, and my, my teacher at the time, uh, Sukhinder Singh Pinky, is a very fine tabla player, very fine uh, a percussionist overall, but he plays a very unique instrument called the jodi. And, and this instrument is uh, you know, a very common instrument in, it was a very common instrument in the Punjab region, but now it's, its commonality has really declined to you know, the memory only being you know, preserved by a few, 
Um, and so, you know, I, at the age of 15, that curiosity was always there that, you know, um, you know, I'm learning from a, a world-class double player, you know, uh, why not have access to the other videos as well? So he very kindly, you know, taught me uh, the jewelry as well. Um, and I'm actually um, his only student in, in Europe that, wow. that learned jewelry from him, uh, which was, it's a big deal, you know, it's a very, very big deal. Um, and, and, and still to this day, you know, like when I, when I, when I meet him and I, and I, I hear his thoughts of music and I hear his thoughts of life, he tells me about his struggle. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where um, without struggle, you won't, you won't get there in the end. You won't get to that, to that end goal, you know? So it's almost a sense that, you know, if you don't struggle, you won't get to that end goal, you know? It's all a part of the journey. And I guess that's true for a lot of things, right? Like everyone on the show previously has been a professional athlete or, or, or ex-professional athlete. So even with them, they, they probably had that, you know, that imposter syndrome where they thought, is this, am I going to be good enough for this? Is this something I can really pursue? And like, like yourself, they've come out of the other end and you know, made something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, as in, I've, I've also had a love-hate relationship with, with my music, you know? Um, and, 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 and I'm sure, you know, uh, we, can, we can go into it another time. But, um, you know, when you have that, that love that no matter what happens, no matter what obstacle, I'm going to complete this. You know, I, I'm going to get to the end of this. And, and, and one of the most motivating things for me was when somebody would say, you can't do this. And I say, hold on a second. Excuse me. Say that again. You know, and, and at, that, at that time when you're that young, it's, it's you know, 99% it's your ego that's telling you that, no, I can do this. You know, if you have a guru to direct you in the right direction, you know, then it makes everything easier because the guru is there to, to continuously get that ego out of you. That reminder that, hold on a second, don't, don't run before you can walk, my friend, you know? That's amazing. Uh, um, yeah. In terms of the, the whole classical music, I know there's a, there's a, lot, of, uh, a lot of people talking about it now, and uh, there's a lot more awareness about the classical music instruments, but... What is your opinion on people using a harmonium or using a tabla? Yeah, um, so actually I'll, 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 I'll be quite honest with you. I think that um, the harmonium is, it, it's, a, it's a fantastic addition, you know? It's, it's used the world over, you know? Hindustani classical Sangeet, you know, a, 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 a lot of the major artists today, they use harmonium, you know, as an aid, you know? Um, and and, and, and what I think what it is, is that, this whole narrative of, you know, the British influence, you know, removing the British influence. And, and you know, if, I, if I'm frank, if you want to remove the British influence, you know, don't drive a car. Yeah. Don't wear British clothes. You know, uh, I think I think the narrative when it comes to uh, our Sangeet is that, oh, the harmonium is a British instrument. Yeah. We should be playing the Sikh instruments now. There's no other religion in the whole world that claims to have an instrument in their religion. You don't hear Muslims saying that, no, this is a Muslim tabla, you know? Or you don't, you don't hear Hindus saying that this is a Hindu pakawaj. No, yet these instruments were, you know, like the pakawaj, for example, was, was in existence before the time of Budman and Devi Pasha, you know? So, um, and if you look at the evolution of musical instruments, um, from the time of Gunman, they did to Sindhi Pasha, you know, it started off with Rabab, you know, uh, uh, Guramar Dasji went to Saranda, you know, then went to Taos and, 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 you know, so on, it carried on, you know, Jodi was added later um, uh, and then Tabla came after that, you know, so there's always been uh, additional instruments which have over the time, over the span of from Gunman Devji all the way to now, Siri Adhan Sab you know, that the instruments have always evolved. Now we're very lucky, you know, we have multiple genres within our, uh, within the Guru's Darbar. Uh, you know, the guitar is used nowadays. And, and, and I think that, yeah, it's, it's a great, um, it's a great addition. But what I do believe is that there is an argument for not having an, a harmonium within a Hindustani Shastriya Sangeet. But that is when you've had a serious level of talim and you're able to recognize the nuances you know, like, uh, like, like you, you, you were mentioning once that, like, Bobby, 
you know, she's taken uh, talim at the bhavan, you know, for, for more than 10 years, you know. When you've, when you've had that level of, of, uh, of learning, you know, then you can understand the intricacies, you know, the yeah. sur between the sur, you know. Yeah, and she, she, in her instance, she didn't start on a harmonium. She was, started with uh, Indian classical instruments. And then later on, when she got into Sikhi, then she um, started doing more kirtan. Uh, yeah. Actually, like her whole, whole, whole 10 years or, or majority of, if I'm not incorrect, her practice time was you know, focusing on just you know, the actual vocals and improving like the learning the rags and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So look, for, for me, you know, I, I'm a teacher, you know, I, I teach on a daily basis and, and my, my youngest student is, is five years old and my oldest student is 60, you know. Wow. Um, and, and, and so, you know, when I look at, um, uh, you know, a student, for example, I teach the student the way that I would have liked to have been taught. You know, for me, that's a big deal because, you know, the journey, everybody talks about their struggle. Everybody talks about, you know, how, you know, they've had to, to learn the hard way sometimes. If I can, you know, impart knowledge without these kids going through the hard way, you know, for me, I get good sleep at night. You know, because I remember what I had to do to understand certain things, you know. That's amazing. Go going on to that, in terms of with your students, I know with musical instruments like violins have potential uh, chronic issues from being in that position. Double I know a few double players. We have mutual friends with double uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they kind of develop these characteristic issues. So I, I have, my question is twofold. One is, how, do you, how can people sit um, in Jongra and then the second thing is, how can you uh, reduce your chances of developing these common musculoskeletal injuries related to the practice of, of tabla or a musical instrument? Yeah, so actually, you know, one of the biggest, one of the biggest questions surrounding tabla and gym is, can I go to the gym and still play tabla? Because one of the biggest fears of people is that, you know, muscle stiffness uh, and, and, and then slows, it slows your hands down. And the answer is yes, but it's actually, um, you know, um, your mindset towards the training. If you're, if you're going there with a power building mindset or a bodybuilding mindset, you won't be able to access those levels of speed. You will have that, that, that stiffness. And, and, and that also goes into, uh, you know, what you were talking about, the jonkara, you know? Um, so um, when I, like, you know, I, I have a, a, a big gym journey as well, you know, I've, I've uh, spent, a lot of time in the gym and I've seen both sides of the story, you know, um, and, and, and what I found is that our people, one of the, the most hated exercises is stretching. We don't like to stretch, you know, uh, and, and so like, for example, if we know we're going to sit for two hours, we don't have this mindset that we're going to stretch and then we're going to sit. We just sit. We did the opposite, you know, um, and so when you're sitting in a jonkari, you know, for, uh, for a considerable amount of time, it's really important that, you know, you stretch. Even if you're, you know, you sat for uh, half an hour, you, you know, you, you get up and you have a little bit of a walk, a little bit of a stretch and sit back down. Great, you know. Um, and, and with that sort of practice, you know, with that sort of practice, you know, after a few months, you'll see the difference. You'll, you'll see that you're able to sit for a longer period of time. Yeah, interesting you say that because I went to uh, something called um, mindfulness-based stress reduction. Um, yeah. and it's, it's a thing they use now in, in the treatment of chronic pain, uh, basically breathing exercises. And in, in that kind of Buddhist philosophy, which is where it stems from, they will have them on a, like a cushion and then mm. lie down or you can walk around. They, they don't sit for extended periods of time. They'll sit and then have a break and, and, and yeah it, you like, can you can actually get a um a, a wedge a wedge cushion you know and that helps um that helps greatly you know that will help with the circulation as well you know a lot of strain gets put on your on your legs when you're sitting you know uh, and then also your 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 bum receives a lot of pain uh actually it receives a lot of the stress you know they call it in the physio world they call it rotty body like the, okay like the bottom starts to rot from Prolonged thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so small blood vessels are very small. You're putting your whole body weight through, or a large amount of your body weight through your bottom. It's constricting those blood vessels. 
yeah 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 so so uh, you know um, i was telling you about my 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 gym journey as well you know um and um i've just recently um, i'm going through my own personal transformation um and and what i have found is that it's actually helped my playing it's helped my stamina uh, you know it's it's you know it's helped my breathing tremendously um where i was getting out of breath after playing for like five or ten minutes you know uh, now I'm able to sort of, uh, you know, play uh, for longer time periods, you know, without without becoming fatigued. And can you give a kind of sample training plan for somebody le- who's who's playing a musical instrument and or, or let's say double R, let's be specific, and they want to have an idea of okay, is it like 15 minutes cardio, 15 minutes resistance training, three times a week, or or how much is how much is just enough without doing too much? Yeah, what, what I actually recommend greatly, especially to the youngsters, is that, um, you know, pick up a sport, boxing, you know, um, you know, kickboxing. It's fantastic for your agility. It's great for your mind. And, and also, you know, it helps with, because we want to build that, those fast uh, twitch muscle fibers, you know. So when you're training in the gym, you know, as opposed to going with, um, uh, you know, very slow controlled movements, you know. Uh, I'd say go with less weight and, and have that explosiveness within your movements, you know. Um, and I think one of the biggest killers for us Punjabis is the weight, you know, that we always want to stack up the bar, you know. It's not got 100 on the, on the bench. We don't want to press it, you know. Okay. So that, that ego mentality needs to change, you know. Yeah, and we, we had a discussion about diet, right? Because when we had a conversation about a year ago, we were talking about how there's this uh, difficulty between gaining size, gaining muscle, and also you know get gain, gaining a belly. And as a vegetarian, yeah. it's a bit of a challenge to put on good size, lean size, without without putting on like having like with protein, for example. If you're my my body weight is about eighty kilograms, so that's a like by some some schools of thought, that's one hundred and sixty grams of protein. So if I'm going to have that without any protein shakes, that's I'm having a lot of carbohydrates as well, right? At least four. Definitely. Um, you see, this is where it actually becomes a little bit dangerous as well because when you're taking five or six protein shakes a day, you know, and that's what you'll need, you know, to, to get to uh, like for me, I'm ninety kg, yeah. So I need five k. I, I need five shakes a day to get to, uh, you know, um, you know, two per two per gram of my weight, you know. Um, and, and this is really actually unhealthy. When I look at like these diet plans these days, um, the first thing I think that, uh, yes, you know, it, the whole game is to sort of come into a, cal- a, a calorie deficit, you know. But the thing is, when I look at these diet plans, it's like, you know, there's no food there, man. You know, it's not, it's not the right food as well, you know. Um, having a lot of greens, you know, it's very important. Uh, and, and that's not to say don't have protein shakes at all, you know, but having you know foods like cottage cheese you know um and 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 nowadays you get so many uh, brilliant meat alternatives which are high in protein um you know so there's so many alternatives that you can you can you can access you know so if you have somebody who wants to take this seriously they want to become a professional musician they don't want to develop musculoskeletal injury so they want to do a bit of training to keep their body in in a good condition what's the kind of sample meal plan uh if uh, uh, this is obviously spirit of the moment so i understand yes. you know i can put it in the description box below if you want to have a, a, a moment to think about it but people like i've had veggie gains on on this uh show before and he was he's a, a powerlifter right a champion powerlifter so his diet his his calorie intake is going to be very diff- different to somebody who wants to be a professional musician and the goals are different right so the amount of volume of training is different the amount of um intake is different uh and you know they're, they're looking more for speed and more for preventing injuries as opposed to getting as strong as you possibly can so w- what does that look like so for what i would say for uh, a keen musician who's you know uh, activity is quite high actually because you know when you're playing the tabla you know it's, it's quite a lot of activity when you're playing an instrument like the one i play the jordi it's like three times that activity you know it's 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 it takes out a lot you know out of you what I would say is that um, having a good regimented plan, you know, uh, because, you know, we talked about this before, that this one glove fits all scenario where, you know, where somebody puts out a, a diet plan and then 
we go and follow that to the T and then we realize, hold on a second, it's not working for me. You know, I'm actually putting on more weight, you know? Um, and, and, and so this, this is where you need to look at your own body composition. And, and so for a musician, I would definitely say that the, the things to look out for is have a good diet plan where you're getting a good balance of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, you know, good carbohydrates. Um, and, and, and the other thing is stretching, you know, stretching before you sit uh, and, and do your riyaz. You know, I'll, I'll just walk around the block once and, and then, uh, you know, I'll stretch and I'll sit. Um, and, and, and it's also really important to have that routine where you do it every day. You know, if you're if you're if you want to invest in, 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 into yourself, this is what I say to my students, you know, invest in yourself, even if it's five minutes a day. Yeah, those five minutes will accumulate day by day, you know, week by week, month by month, you know, and, and if you can do, you know, more than five minutes, if you can do an hour a day, you know, you can imagine by the end of, uh, you know, by the end of the month, you've got, you know, 30 hours of, of Dalian, uh, you know, uh, and cool. you were talking to me once about the, uh, the 10,000. 10, yeah, so I, I want to be devil's advocate here. If you're, if you're a, a professional, if you're not a professional musician, you want to be a Kirtani. And you want to know how to play tabla uh, well in order to, as part of your kind of journey as a Sikh. Um, the good wala food is going to be things like, you know, kheer, matyai, uh, you know, prashad de pronte. So, like, how do you, because presumably the places that you go, they're probably not like salads and, uh, you know. So yeah, yeah, so actually, I, I'll tell you one of the biggest things that I have implemented in my life in the last year is that... Um, I've completely cut out wheat from my diet, you know, so I'm still having carbohydrates, but I'm having good carbs, you know, I'm having rice, uh, you know, uh, sweet potato, uh, and I'm still having potato as well, you know, uh, I think uh, what I would definitely say is that before you look at a diet plan, it's always good to just cut your portion size in half first, you know, eat what you normally eat, but just cut your portion sizes in half. Up in air, we'll have, we, we don't have like four or five roti, only there to get, you know. It was stuffed. Yeah. So, uh, actually, what I do when I go to the Guru Ghar, I'll still eat the langar, I just won't have prasada. You know? That's a very really um, good strategy. I think that one strategy alone, if people followed that, they would have tangible differences in, in the way they look and feel. Yeah. Because, um, you know, um, obviously nowadays there's a lot more education about these things even now what we were talking about earlier about you know uh, harmonium you know uh, you know kirtan whatever there's a lot more education these days you know there's people that have done some fantastic work um you know and and then there's there's also people that have done fantastic work but they're forcing it into the people's mouths you know that no this is how you need to do it and what i would say is that tread carefully here look at yourself look at what is good for you first you know, and then absorb that information, you know, because, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I found that because I, I go to, we take the kids to uh, kind of church play groups and stuff, what we used to when they were younger, because those are the play groups around here. And I yeah. found they were, they were a very inclusive community. So even though obviously we've got a beard and turban, we're clearly not Christian. They were, they were very welcoming towards us. You know, they, they showed us a lot of beard. And I, I find like um, that there's a lot our community could learn from you know that kind of supporting each other and you know giving each yeah other I think I think one of the you know we've 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 spoken about this before one of the uh, you know one of the biggest downfalls that, that I personally see in our community is that we've created different sects amongst ourselves you know uh, you know Kankirtanis uh, are there you know uh, the Nanaks are are there you know and there's so many different you know? Right? yeah there's there's so many and what we've done is we've basically uh, said okay this guy he wears a turban like this you know and, and he looks a certain way uh, so okay he's a part of this community you know and and we've we've, we've sort of you know um, really really you know sort of put everybody in their their own little uh, you know pockets you know yeah so so it's like this within within the music as well the one thing I would definitely say is that one of my my one of my big motivations one of my biggest motivations actually um, along this whole, uh, you know, fitness journey, music journey, is just having the right people around you. Yeah. You know, uh, when, I, when I was going to the gym, uh, you know, when I first started going to the gym, like when I was, when I was you know, 16, 17 years old, uh, well, a very, very dear friend of mine, Tujar Singh, uh, lives in Hackney. Uh, and we'd meet every single day to go to the gym. 
we'd meet together, we'd, you know, we'd go to the gym together, we'd eat together, we'd do that stuff together. It was like a, it was like a family, you know, it's that, that firm mentality, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and now I, that, that same, uh, that same family is there in, in the music scene, you know, just their VG is there, Amrapal VG is there, you know, my, my Guru Bai is, we all learn from the same uh, um, uh, teacher, you know? Um, so, you know, having that, that circle around you, you know, yeah. where people are imparting, you know, knowledge and a lot of positive, yeah. you know, you know. Yeah, I think, I think that's the key thing is, it's got to be positive because you, you don't want a community of people that is, you know, bringing, bringing you down, right? You want people who are going to be lifting you up and, and you want people who are going to be like having good quality so that you can learn good qualities of them, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and and for me, the good thing is that, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I started to learn uh, Jodi uh, from my uh, from my Guruji now Pandit Yogesh Samsiji, and um, it just so happens that his students Amrupaviji and just Deviji they're also gym they 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 gymers you know so they they play tabla and and they also they're into the music scene and they do gym as well so having that uh, you know that sangat there that encouragement that that you know like if you're stuck with anything don't worry I'm here you know so I was really fortunate to have that. Um, in, in, in my gym life, I'm really fortunate to have that in my music life as well. And so I would definitely, um, you know, when I, when I, when I give my, uh, you know, any sort of advice to, to kids that wanted to learn, kids that want to get into the music, kids that want to get into fitness, you know, um, uh, for example, my local guru card here, GNG Smedi, now they've got boxing class, Thai boxing class, you know, um, so many different classes there, just go there, you know, and, and, and when you've made friends and, and when you, you, when you've, when you really, when you see that, okay, you know, that okay, this is something that's happening here. Something's big is happening here. You know, um, you'll see how your life changes. Okay. On final note, where can people get in contact with you? Where can people reach you? Uh, what's the best way to get? So I, I teach um, at my local guruka, GNG Smedic. Uh, I also teach one to one uh, in person and online. Uh, you know, thanks to COVID nineteen. You know, we've we've. Uh, had a, a completely uh, sh a complete shift in the way that we deliver information, you know, hence why we're sitting here today. So I have a website, uh, justdeep.co.uk, and, and I run uh, an Instagram handle, um, Just Deep Sing. So, you know, if anybody wants to, uh, you know, join the journey of Tabla or Jordi, by all means, you know, That'd be amazing. get in touch. I'm going to be in touch as well. Also, I'll add all of that information in the description box below. So if anyone wants to, um, please do check it out. We really appreciate your time today. I know you've got little ones, uh, a newborn, so it means that much more that you, you know, you've taken out a lot of time for us. So thank you. So no, much. no, I think I think I must give the final thanks actually because the time that you are putting into creating each and every one of these podcasts, you know, uh, it means a lot to me because you know a lot of the things that that you put out, uh, you know, it, it, they've affected me in my life, and I've implemented them or I've tried to implement them in my life, you know. Thank you. So the fact that I have a cold shower every morning is thanks to you. <laughs> thank you. So thank, thank you so much. All right. Thank you, guys.